I finally did it. 25 years after seeing the volleyball documentary, shower room drama, fighter jet movie, Top Gun, I finally got a proper replica of the F-14 Tomcat control column for my flight and space simulators. That's not what this video is about. Tune into the next episode of Mr. Mobile Stays Home for more about this triumphant tribute to the Tomcat. This video is about the latest laptop I've plugged that joystick into, my first ever review unit from MSI, a machine so monstrous it takes two tubers to tackle it. I'm Michael Fisher. And I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And this is the MSI Creator 17, a desktop replacement built for, well, creators. creators. The reason I wanted Josh to help me out with this one is because stress testing PCs is really not what I do. As you may recall, when my nose is to the grindstone, I make my videos in Final Cut on a MacBook Pro. And when it's Thrustmaster time, well, I'm usually playing games from the late 90s that would barely tax your phone, let alone a PC. So I'm gonna take you through the fundamentals of this laptop, from casing to keyboard, from screen to speakers, and then I'll pass it over to Josh for his thoughts on performance. When you first lay your eyes on the Creator 17, it's kind of a love it or hate it situation, isn't it? For my part, I love it in a kind of this could have been an Independence Day 2 kind of way. As with all desktop replacements, this one is supreme in scale and hella heavy. But unlike other manufacturers that seem to be leaning more and more minimalist, MSI had fun with this design. Sure, the fan grills are gaudy and the keyboard font is capital A aggressive, but as you know, I'll take bold over boring any day. Along the sides, you'll find enough ports to keep your production pipeline humming, from USB-A to USB-C and Thunderbolt to HDMI, even an RJ45 Ethernet port, along with separate jacks for headphones and microphone, which should make streamers and podcasters happy. The only complaint I had here was the micro SD slot, which is nice to have, but a full-size SD would have been nicer. It's not like they didn't have the room. On the other half of the clamshell, MSI is very proud of this 17-inch 4K display, which is backlit by mini-LED technology that gives it more versatility, especially for HDR content, and of course it also has the range and accuracy for editing photos or video. I tend to prefer OLED in my laptop panels. Every time I go back to my Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, it's a feast for my contrast-obsessed eyeballs. But this display nails two other details that other manufacturers too often miss. A matte finish, so I can still see the screen even in high glare environments, and peak brightness of nearly a thousand nits. You haven't tasted frustration until you've tried getting work done on a panel that just doesn't have the oomph to overcome harsh sunlight, whether that's on a rooftop patio or in front of big windows. So this retina searing backlight is probably my favorite feature. We'll talk about what that means for battery life. Spoiler alert, it's not good, but first, Let's touch on these keys. I had high hopes for this keyboard when I took my tentative first taps. They've got great travel and a nice soft stop with quiet switches. But the layout has some challenges. Look, I love a numpad and I think every desktop replacement should have one, but for some reason on this machine, I feel the offset of the main keyboard much more keenly. So it always feels like I'm typing slightly sideways. Maybe that's because of the very wide trackpad, which picks up erroneous touches all the time, and when I do mean to click it, feels as mushy as an old pillow. It's also frustrating to two-finger scroll, which often triggers a three-finger gesture for some reason. About the only thing I like about this trackpad is the fingerprint scanner, which is swift, even if it's made for southpaws. Back to the keyboard, even things that should be a win aren't. It's great to have these full-sized arrow keys, but they're totally nullified by the decision to place the right arrow in line with the last row of the numpad. The result is whether I'm using the numpad or using the arrow keys, I'm always pressing the wrong button, even after a week. There's also no visual indicator for numlock, there's no function lock that I can find, and this is another one of those PCs with no media shortcuts in the function row. All in all, it's just not a great input experience, which is a shame because of how comfortable the keys themselves actually are. I was also let down by the Creator 17's endurance. I understand that desktop replacement machines aren't made to be road warriors, but with MSI claiming seven hours of runtime on the 82 watt hour battery, I thought I could at least squeeze out an afternoon. Instead, I got exactly two hours from unplugged to power down, even though I was behaving. I was only using Microsoft Edge with a handful of web apps and I had the display brightness set to 40%. 
Oh, also, I had the Creator Center scenario set to silent. Otherwise, I would not have been able to think over the omnipresent roar of the fans, which spin up even when I'm just scrolling Twitter. Now, if you're thinking there's something funky with my experience, yeah, join the club. Notebook Check reported a four-hour battery life in their testing. Dave2D reported the same. And Josh is, I think, about to reinforce that. So maybe something's amiss on my review device, like this pre-installed executable that the pre-installed Norton suite keeps warning me about. Apparently, this is a software suite preloaded to maximize the audio side of this spec sheet, a spec sheet that's one of the most potent you can find in semi-portable form. And I'm about to hand it over to Josh to tell you all about it, but since I mentioned audio, here's one last disappointment of mine. PC manufacturers, I sound like a broken record and I'm sorry, but in a world where the MacBook Pro exists, you've just got to do better on the built-in audio. Now that stuff aside, I've mostly enjoyed my week with the Creator 17, but before you decide whether an MSI laptop is right for you, let's turn it over to Josh, whom I picked for this collab for a very specific reason. He's my first and so far my only friend whom I've seen use an MSI laptop of his own for real work, like out in the real world. So let's go to him for what it's like to use the Creator 17 for its namesake purpose. Okay, I know you're not much of a PC gamer, Michael, but I gotta say, you're missing out. The experiences and fun that you can have with a good, powerful PC like this take gaming to a whole new level. And that's why it's easy to love the MSI Creator 17. It's got a lot of what a gamer would want in a portable shell. An Intel 10th generation i7 processor and the RTX 2070 Max-Q are in the upper tier of performance specs, and it shows in every game that I've played so far. I'm actually playing a recent game called Control and it runs smooth as butter on ultra settings with ray tracing put on medium. It's the most recent game that I threw onto this laptop, so every other game that I've played just followed suit. Games like Borderlands 3, Jedi Fallen Order, and Yakuza Kiwami 2 to name a few. And how could I possibly complain when it's all being done on a great 4K, high refresh rate, super bright, vibrant mini LED display? It only gets better when the computer is paired with a few peripherals. Like Michael said, the keyboard and the speakers are definitely just the weakest part of this package. But you know what, this laptop is called the Creator 17, and I think that the shift in focus to creators makes perfect sense. See, I've used MSI laptops for years because the same specifications that drive high-powered gaming can power the video and photo editing processes too. I edited this very video with DaVinci Resolve, and even with my somewhat simplistic approach to video, I can overload any standard laptop with 4K footage and high-resolution photos in the timeline. The Creator 17 right here is actually the first laptop that I've used that doesn't buckle or even stutter under my 4K workflow. So as I get into my office and connect my monitor and other tools to this laptop, I'm setting myself up for a great battle station to get any part of my work or play done. It just so happens that the laptop can actually leave the office with me. Honestly, it's just the quality of life details of this laptop that do give this rig some diminishing returns. If I could even fit the Creator 17 in any of my current bags, I would throw this laptop and its huge power brick in them and enjoy power while on the move. My Creator 17 has gotten a lot of good use for both work and play. It just hasn't moved nearly as much. MSI got a lot right with the Creator 17, don't get me wrong, but if you ask me, they did more to create something like a foldable desktop than they did a powerful portable laptop. Folks, if you want Josh's full rundown on the MSI Creator 17, I'll link to his video. And for more chill tech reviews that just make you feel a little more relaxed, be sure you're subscribed to Josh's channel. The MSI Creator 17 is available on Amazon for between $1,500 and $3,000, depending on configuration. And you know, those prices seem awful competitive given the last few laptops I've reviewed. While it wouldn't be my first choice, I'll leave a link to that Amazon listing in the description below. This video was produced following seven days with the Creator 17 review sample provided by MSI, but Mr. Mobile works for you, not the manufacturers. MSI offered no compensation for this coverage, and it was given no copy approval rights or an early preview of this video, which means they're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. If you use the affiliate link in the description, future PLC, Mr. Mobile's publisher, may earn a small commission. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile and JV Tech Tea on YouTube if this is the kind of video you'd like to see more of. Until next time, thanks for watching, and if you can't stay home, then at least stay safe and wear a mask while you stay mobile, my friends. Bye.